All right, now we're going to teach you how to get in the car and make it ready to drive. We have Alex here. Alex is going to show you how to put on a helmet. So you're going to put this little strap through both of these connectors, then around, and then back through only the first one. So it creates a little loop. This makes it so you can tighten it, but then quickly loosen it by pulling on the red thing right here. Next, Alex is going to get into the car. So you can see attached to Alex's wrist, we have these wrist restraints here. And coming off of them, there's a strap with this little loop attached to it. And the point of these is so that when you roll the car over, your arms can't go out of the envelope of the car, and therefore your hands can't get broken off. So these are going to get looped around the anti-submarine belt here. And then over on the side belt on the right is the actual latching mechanism. And you're just going to stick that up into the middle. Next up is going to come the other lap belt. And it's going to clip onto the other side. Then finally, we're going to get the two shoulder restraints. And they are also going to clip in. You're going to want to make all of these really tight. So grip down on this and pull it as hard as you can. And then the same thing for the lap belts over here. And then Alex is going to finally put the gloves on. Um, there's a fair amount of adjustability in the car. You can adjust the position of the pedals as well as the position of the steering rack. But we're not going to do any of that right now as it requires tools. Anyways, there you go. And if you need to take the steering wheel off to get in or out of the car, um, you can just pull this little yellow thing in the back, like this, and then that just slides right on and is held in place. All right, so these are the car keys, effectively. They're these little red plastic pieces that go into these switches and then turn them on. So. First, you're going to want to turn the main GLV systems of the car on. So we're going to insert this key and then turn it to the on position. For any switch like this, it's mandated by the rules that the position where this is going forward to back of the car is the on position. And then the one where it's going either up and down or side to side is the off position. So we're going to turn it on. And as you can see, the car doesn't turn on. Um, there's also these two side big red buttons. And you just have to make sure that both of these are popped out. So we can pop that out, and the car starts up. The fans should come on for a couple seconds and then turn off. They'll turn back on when we set it into ready to drive. Next, we're going to come around to this side of the car. So over here, we have our fault reset buttons, helpfully out of the reach of the driver, so that the driver can't reset any potentially dangerous faults. So in order, we have optional lockout integration, insulation monitoring device, and accumulator monitoring system. So to, when the car first turns on, all three of these will display that they're faulted. But we're just going to want to clear those three to make sure that there are no faults. So we're going to hit the OLLI first, then the IMD, and finally, the AMS. And you can see the safety system OK lights turn on. The car is not yet active because the cockpit VRB and the TSMS are not in yet. but the safety systems do not include those, and therefore the safety system OK lights turn on as soon as everything before those two components is on. Coming back over to this side of the car, we can see the TSMS, which we hadn't plugged in yet. So we're going to put the same key that goes in the GLVMS into this one. Again, turn it on. When you do this, you should typically relatively loudly announce that you are energizing the car in case anybody is around it and wants to get out of the way of high voltage. So energizing the car. You're going to see nothing happens because the cockpit BRB is still pressed down. So next, we're going to move to the cockpit. So at this point, the whole car is ready to go, except for two last things. And these are both actuated by the driver. So right here, we have the cockpit big red button. And this is the last thing in the whole shutdown circuit. So I'm going to ask Alex to pull the CBRB. And you're going to see that the red light up here starts flashing. Um, this is our tractive system active light, so it makes it very clear whenever the car is a danger to itself or others. Um, 
Then finally, one last thing we're gonna need to do before the car is completely ready to drive. So Alex is gonna push down on the brake to make sure that the car stays in place. The car won't go into ready to drive state unless you are holding down the brake. Then Alex is gonna press the button labeled RTD. The RTD sound will sound for a couple seconds and then the fans will come on to cool down the car while it's driving. Now, if you want to press the pedal, the car's going. And that's how to safely start and make the car ready to drive. So for shutting down the car, uh, it kind of depends on what you want to do. If you just want to shut down tractive systems or if you want to de-energize the entire car and turn off GLV as well. But basically anything that is red and looks like you could hit it on the side, as well as having these universal shutdown and off stickers on it can turn the car off. So just to start out with the TSMS, I'm just gonna pull that and the tractive systems shut off. However, GLV is still on and safety systems are still okay, as you can see from the light. If we plug that back in, everything comes right back on. Uh, as well, you can hit, you can turn off all of the car, all of GLV, by pulling this switch or hitting this button. Now to go forward to the cockpit to look at what the driver can do. So coming up to the cockpit, you can see that the driver has the big red button there and if he hits it, the car once again de-energizes. Again, low voltage is still on, but all the tractive systems are now de-energized. And so that's the way for the driver to safely shut down the car. So finally, we're just gonna look at in the event of an emergency, although we really hope that doesn't happen, what should you do as a driver? So effectively an egress test at competition. So first, what you're gonna do, uh, depending on the severity of the problem, and if you think it's electrical, uh, you're gonna hit the CBRB. If you are panicking and trying to get out of the car and you don't have time to do that, that's okay. It's not critical to your safety. Next, what you're gonna do, if you need to take the wheel off to get out, you're gonna just pull the wheel off and probably throw it off to the side, but here we're just gonna set it on top there. Finally, looking at the little latch here, you're basically just gonna hit it and it'll swing to the side and all of the belts will pop out of it. Then you're gonna jump out of the car. We can do this in a really short amount of time, but we did it slowly for you guys to see.